Once upon a time, not too long ago, there was a young and handsome prince. He lived with his mother in a large white castle in the middle of a beautiful forest. prince was very gay. He should have been busy ruling his kingdom, but he preferred to go off to parties with his friends. One night, the people of his kingdom were celebrating the prince's 21st birthday. As the people danced and sang, the queen said to the prince, I have invited many beautiful princesses to come to a party. You must choose one of them and marry her and start to rule your kingdom. The prince was most unhappy at this. He didn't want to get married. He didn't want to settle down and rule his kingdom. And anyway, he wasn't in love with any of the princesses. So to cheer himself up, he went hunting swans with his friends. Everybody was enjoying themselves hunting the swans when suddenly the young prince found himself alone deep in the forest. As he wondered which way to go, there rose from out of a still, clear lake a beautiful girl dressed in the white feathers of a swan. She was so beautiful that as soon as the prince saw her, he fell in love with her, and she fell in love with him. As they danced together in the forest, she whispered to him her secret. My prince, I am not really a swan. My name is Odette and I am a girl. Many years ago, a wicked magician cast a spell on me, making me partly a swan. Can nothing be done to free you from the spell? There can, but... I will do anything. Tell me what. Only when a man promises to love me forever will the spell be broken. The prince swore that he would love her forever. And as he spoke, there rose out of the lake a cloud of cygnets, which danced around him and Odette.
The next night, at the Prince's Castle, a great party was being held. The beautiful princesses the Queen had invited were dancing a waltz. And then to entertain the guests, there came dancers from Spain. And dancers from Italy. And finally, just as the prince was telling his mother that he could not marry any of the beautiful princesses, Odette, the swan girl, arrived. But it wasn't really Odette at all. The wicked magician who had turned Odette into a swan girl wanted his own daughter to marry the prince. So he dressed her up to look like Odette and took her to the castle. The prince was overjoyed. As he danced with the girl he thought was Odette, he asked her to marry him. While all the time, afraid to go near the prince, the real Odette stood on the outskirts of the crowd, trying to attract his attention. Suddenly, there was a flash and a cloud of smoke as the magician and his daughter, confident their plan had worked, vanished. At once, the prince realized he had been tricked into betraying Odette and dashed into the forest to look for her. Down by the lake, Odette was telling her story to the Signets. She said, I must leave you forever. I must go into the lake and never return. But just at that moment, the prince arrived. He ran to Odette. Forgive me. The magician tricked me too. My prince, of course I forgive you. But your promise to love me forever has been broken. Now only death can end the magician's spell. Sadly, she threw herself into the lake, and at once the young prince followed her, while the signets danced in mourning for them.
But as the cygnets danced, the lake showed that it had magic of its own. For out of it rose Odette, and with her the prince, together, floating away to a new and happy life where the magician could never harm them. Once upon a time, in a large and beautiful castle, in a land where the birds sang all day and the sun shone all day, there was born a new princess. She was smiling and pretty, with fair hair and bright blue eyes, and when she laughed, everyone round her felt happy. Soon after she was born, her father, the king, whose name was Floriston the 24th, said to her mother, the queen, We must have a party to celebrate her christening. Yes, my dear. We'll invite all the fairies to be her godmothers. Yes, my dear. And we'll christen her Aurora, Princess Aurora. It sounds excellent, doesn't it? And the queen said, Yes, my dear. And settled down to write all the invitations. It was a wonderful party. One by one, the fairy godmothers went up to the baby princess and presented their gifts. First, the fairy of the crystal fountain, the fairy of the enchanted garden, the fairy of the songbirds, the fairy of the golden vine. And they gave to Princess Aurora grace, beauty, a wonderful voice, all the gifts that a princess should have. When suddenly, a flash of lightning and a cloud of smoke that sent the good fairies and the courtiers running, there entered the wicked fairy, Carabos. 
followed by her retinue of rats. All around her, the people fell silent. Their faces turned ashen pale. Only the little Princess Aurora continued to laugh and gurgle until the shadow of the wicked fairy fell over her cradle. For a few moments, Carabas gazed down at her. Then she turned to the king and queen and shouted, You did not invite me to the christening. You thought I was not good enough. You thought that because I have no pretty clothes and my face does not smile, I would not be able to bring a gift. But I have brought a gift. But I have brought a gift. <laughs> I have brought a gift. <laughs> my gift is a curse. One day, little princess, you will grow beautiful, but you will not live, for you will prick your finger on a spindle, and you will die, die, die! <laughs> and with her cackles ringing in the ears of the horrified king and queen, she gathered her black cloak round her and ran from the palace, followed by her rats. Everyone was stunned. The happy christening party had been ruined. Their lovely, laughing little princess would grow up to die. But from the back of the crowd stepped another fairy. She danced over to the king as he comforted the queen, and she said, I am the lilac fairy. Please do not weep so, for I have still to make my gift to the princess Aurora. And while the curse cannot be undone, I can change it. The princess will prick her finger, but she will not die. She will only sleep, a long, deep sleep, from which she shall be awakened by the kiss of a handsome prince. Years passed and Princess Aurora grew up, tall, straight and lovely. The wicked fairy's curse was almost forgotten and in any case the king had long since banned all spindles from the palace. Then came the day of her 16th birthday. King had ordered another party for her. Among the guests were four princes who had come to ask her hand in marriage. But to each of them, the princess said no. Then, tiring of the festivities, she wandered off to be alone for a while. As she walked, an old woman approached her. She beckoned to the princess and showed her something she had never seen before, a spindle. The princess 
princess looked at it, and as she took it, she pricked her finger. She cried out in pain. The four suitors rushed to help her, and as they did so, the old woman threw off her cloak and ran away, revealing that she was the wicked fairy and that her curse was about to come true. But while the weeping courtiers watched Princess Aurora being carried to her room, the lilac fairy again stepped forward and said, Sleep. Sleep, Aurora. Sleep. Sleep, courtiers. Sleep. Sleep, your majesties. Sleep, dogs. Sleep, cows. Sleep, cats. Sleep, chickens. Sleep mice, sleep rats, sleep everyone, sleep. And as all the people and all the animals in the palace began to fall asleep where they stood, the lilac fairy looked about her and waved her magic wand. Grow, forest, grow. Surround the palace, hide these people, protect them from all but the prince who will wake Aurora with a kiss. The forest grew thick and impassable, hiding the palace, until it was forgotten and the story of the sleeping princess was little more than a legend. But one day, a young prince, Florimund, was hunting on the outskirts of the forest with his friends. The chase had been hot and exciting, and now the young prince was separated from his friends. As he looked round to see where he was, the lilac fairy appeared before him. He asked her where he was, and the lilac fairy said, You are near the palace of the Sleeping Beauty, the princess who can only be awakened by a prince's kiss. And as the prince listened to the lilac fairy's story, he saw a vision, a vision of the princess, lovely, fair, with blue eyes and a smile on her lips as she slept. The prince began to walk towards the vision, but it faded. He pleaded with the lilac fairy. Please lead me to the castle. She is more beautiful than I could ever have imagined. Take me to her, please. The lilac fairy turned and led the prince through the thickets and the undergrowth, with branches brushing his face and creepers grasping at his legs, until they arrived at the palace and the room where the princess Aurora lay sleeping. The prince bent over her, closer, closer. Then his lips touched hers in a kiss light as a gossamer brushing a leaf. Aurora's eyelids flickered. She opened her eyes, she smiled, and she sat up, awake at last. All over the palace, the people who'd been at the party woke up too. The courtiers, the servants, the cows, the dogs, the rats, the cats, the mice, wakening to the news that their Princess Aurora was alive and was to marry the Prince Florimund. Everyone went to the wedding. Goldilocks, Beauty and the Beast, Puss in Boots and the White Cat, the Bluebirds, Red Riding Hood, and even her Red Wolf. 
and they all joined in a great joyful dance. The princess's fairy godmothers were there too to bless the marriage. And Princess Aurora and her prince lived happily ever after.